welcome back to Creative Outcomes. Today with me, you might notice I don't have Ryan Watson. I have another uh, guest with us, a fellow Upsource um, controller, uh, Andrew, and he's joining me today to talk about time tracking and why it matters, what are some best practices, and what are some tools that we can use uh, in the agency world to um, help you guys with time tracking. So welcome to the podcast, Andrew. Thanks. Big shoes to fill. I know that everyone's used to seeing Ryan Watson here as well, but excited to be able to jump in and join you for this topic as it is really important for a lot of our agencies that we work with, but not necessarily something that a lot of people real, realize why it's important or how to best like utilize it and make sure that the team is doing it and you're getting the best data you can from the process. Yeah. Um, so I guess to, to, to start us up, uh, with this topic, like it's often we see when clients come to us, they're not necessarily time tracking or not doing it in the most efficient way possible. And so it's often one of our first recommendations when you start working with us is like, hey, we gotta we gotta start this time tracking. And we know that no one likes to do it. It is, you know, we're working with a lot of creative people and they just wanna be out here and, and do their creative thing, um, which is awesome, but there there is a, a benefit to time tracking. Um, so I guess, you know, we've, we we got to have a client coming to us. They don't time track. What are what is your argument for why they should be like, why does this matter? I think from the kind of not even bringing into financials. So, so a lot of people are typically involved in this process. So you may have an area where you don't necessarily want everyone um, at the company to be aware of what top line revenue or things like that are. So okay. from more of like a capacity planning standpoint, uh, team utilization, things like that, that's a really important piece there. Yeah. So that you can not only figure out like how is the team working as it stands uh, today in the past, you can use that data as well as um, a lot of these time tracking softwares now allow for forward looking, uh, whether yeah. it's an integration from a separate subscription or just um, even within the app, like the software itself, so that you can help plan for how does a future project or potential projects affect the capacity of the team. And you can look down at specific hours to see uh, where that works, whether it's uh, on a roll or depending on how you break out into various departments or lines of services. If you are an agency that has uh, working with design and web development, or maybe you're just design, you want to break it out into see what how the creative director role works or a account manager, you want to bring out something like that, yeah. or just different tiers of designers, whether it be senior associate or just normal product designers there. Yeah. So I guess the key point here is like the date, like we've got to collect the data in order to be able to make the decision. So to see what the future looks like, we need to know what your current team is working on and where they're spending their time. Um, so that allows for capacity planning, but that also, um, it tells us like, are we profitable? Like, are these projects profitable that, that we're spending our time on? Um, and one of, I guess, jumping back to capacity planning, uh, one of the one of my favorite stories about like why this matters is I was having a client where the employee was constantly spending an over a forty hour work week every single month. We were looking at their, you know, how much time they were spending each month, and so we dug in a little bit, and this person was like spending a bunch of time rendering fire files to the cloud. And so to solve that, we were just like, let's buy a more expensive computer. It'll render faster. And then he doesn't have to spend 10 hour days waiting for things to upload. So like, it it's not necessarily like a punishment that like your employees aren't working enough, or it's like just a data point to understand where that time is being spent to make those decisions to to help the business grow. That's a great point. Being able to articulate and explain to your team why this is important, as we've said, is just half the battle there. Uh, kind of Meredith mentioned it at the beginning where sometimes it's uh, viewed as just another process that you have to add to the plate, another thing that you need to take care of during the day. But it is something that is very much uh, the benefit to your team and you're allowing for uh, good decisions to be made and knowing exactly when to uh, make the right hiring decisions so that one, you're not overspending on a position so yep. that there's more profit. Uh, you're able to give more salary, salary raises, things like that. But then also you're able to just ensure that your team isn't being overworked. And uh, yeah. that is a very specific example where yeah. it kind of gets into like a best practice we, we talk about is that everyone should be tracking 
the services team specifically should be tracking all their hours. The, yep. the internal hours in that specific um, yeah. example were just as important as the billable hours to the team yeah. so that you can kind of see what exactly is going on and, again, more of the why behind the data as opposed to just using the data as informational or uh, interesting. Yeah. Um, okay, so I think capacity planning, um, do we want to talk a little bit about like the project profitability side of it and then like the pricing side? Because I think those are two other pieces where, um, you know, your team can be really busy, but it feels like we're just not making money. Okay, well, then that's like the next layer to dig into. And it's, um, are we pricing these projects correctly that we're that we're we're bringing in and the work that we're doing. So then you can analyze by having that data, you can look to see, okay, how much time is it actually spending to, to build a website? This is how much we thought it was, but this is in reality, how much time we're actually spending. Um, and so you can adjust that pricing um, going forward. Yeah, I think that makes perfect sense. And as um, agencies are out there, it's a constant thing where you're the question is being asked, how much should we be charging for our services? Which our answer to that is normally uh, whatever the market allows. So that's a tough <laughs> one, but um, obviously digging deeper into the data, which we're able yeah. to do with this time tracking data, and we're able to split it out into the project profitability. Yeah. Um, it, not only like a fixed fee scope where you're just charging the same amount over the, for one project and then just kind of seeing like, did we go over scope and what we budgeted for hours or under scope? But also kind of something that most uh, people don't realize is looking at it from the time and material side too. Even if yeah. you're strictly charging for the amount of hours that are worked and the amount of hours that you are um, planning to build those exact amount from the month, you're still looking at a lot of our clients will look and say, well, we're just, we're not profitable. Why? Oh, we should be profitable if we're time and materials because everything that we're billing is the amount of hours that we're paying our people for. So uh, another way to look into that is to see exactly, well, what exactly is being tracked as non-billable time? So that's something where if you're able to uh, bring in and make mm -hmm. sure that somebody who's intimately involved with the projects, whether it be a project manager or an ops associate, something like that, where they can review the hours and what's logged in, uh, in the time tracking software on a sometimes even weekly basis. Maybe it's just a couple times a month, but it's important to have somebody else involved so that you can make sure that you are billing for the time that should be, that is spent on the client. Even if that's, yeah. even if it's an internal meeting that you're talking about the client, it's yep. typically going to be something you should be billing for. And I don't think a lot of people realize that a lot yeah. of agencies let that slide, but yeah. if you're time tracking, you're tracking internal and billable data. Yep time, then that allows for you to be able to actually see that and make those decisions and kind of change processes. Yeah, cool. Okay, so I think we hit on like why it matters. So if you guys have any follow-up questions, feel free to reach out to us. We could spend a lot of time on this. But let's go into like some like, okay, executionally, here's how like best practices like that we see and that we would recommend uh, for you to implement in your agency. Um, I think one of your, you already mentioned one, like have your entire team, service team track all of their hours. Yeah. That's going to ensure that we have that full data set. Um, so like, it's great to be having the data, but if you don't have accurate data, then it doesn't lead to informed decisions. So for accuracy, um, the other, another piece I see is if you have like a, either a project manager or an operations, for, like a dedicated resource to just once a week review the time that was tracked and say like, does this make sense? Does it feel right? Um, it's just, just kind of that like high level look to see, okay, people are checking their time. There's like a 40 hour week in there and, and it, it looks reasonable. Um, yeah. And it's uh, kind of in a point to really tie those up that you mentioned Meredith is uh, obviously we hear it a lot, especially some agencies are already doing this when we come and start working with them. Others have never done it before. Mm -hmm. And then all along the spectrum there of mm -hmm. different areas. And at the most pushback that we see from the team that are, this is being implemented. Well, it's just another thing on our plate. How are we supposed to manage this? Fortunately, a lot of the um, time tracking softwares that we recommend at least allow for you to just go in, start your timer at the beginning of the day, and just kind of let it run. You're able to toggle between different projects and also be able to kind of go and just at the end of the day, turn it off. And that should typically be close to the um, amount of hours that you're being paid for in a day. So we kind of typically, you've seen it called uh, paid time. Mm -hmm. So just 
if you're an annual, somebody who's a salaried employee, you're being paid for 40 hours a week. So your time should be somewhere in that range. And having that constant running timer is something that helps in to do that. And you're not having to think about it as much. Yeah. So of that eight hour day, not all of that would be billable. You know, you'd have yes. to. So make sure you're tracking your billable and your non-billable. Mm-hmm. Gives us that big picture. Um, yeah. So <laughs> have everyone that's servicing the client uh, track time, start timer. It's just a quick way to, to ensure accuracy and then have someone uh, review and approve it. Um Anything else you want to add on best practices? Uh, I mean, there's plenty of best practices out there, but I think these are the really the big ones to yeah. kind of, um, if you're just starting to think about time tracking or you want to kind of just yeah. review where you're at and get better at it as an agency, this is these are some of the high level uh, points to hit on so that you can really start doing this and be yeah. successful and have some better data available. The other thing I think that's important is all about the messaging that you have to your team. Like you, the business owner might really understand this and like, you're like, yeah, that makes sense, but I'm going to get pushback from my team. It's all about the messaging. And, and we work with people every day and we've gone and sat in on team, like our clients, team meetings and explained why time tracking matters. Um, and so if you can give them the why and like what the, the reasoning is behind it, I, you get better buy-in from my experience. Um, cool. Anything else? I think those are the high level. Uh, I guess we could head on. There's a bunch of different time tracking softwares. The yeah, ones that yeah, we yeah. Um, most frequently see, I see Harvest, Teamwork. Um, Float's another good one. Uh, I think one thing to uh, consider when you're doing this is uh, what it, what else are you do you want to accomplish? Do you yeah. have a project management software out there that you're using to kind of keep track of different tasks that are being completed on the team? There's yeah. some uh, time tracking softwares that allow for that project management software, as well as keeping that um, tracking time and keeping that running timer. Or maybe you're more concerned about that forward-looking capacity planning. A float is another good one out there that allows for you to be able to track time very easily, as well as look forward and see how future projects and work fall in and uh, fit to where your, what your current team is looking like. Yeah. Awesome. Well, This was Creative Outcomes on time tracking. I hope you guys enjoyed the episode. Uh, If you did, follow us on like, subscribe, follow, YouTube, Instagram, all all of those places you you get your social media. Um, And if there's a topic that you would like to hear about, please feel free to reach out to us. Thanks. Thanks.